Hey guys, I'm Jim. Thanks for coming back. This is episode number 10 of my Luminar AI tutorial series. Hope this has been helpful. Hope you're having fun. I've actually still got another video or two to go in this series, but episode 10, this one, we've covered all the editing tools, uh, which also are known as filters on the four various tabs. And what we're talking about today is local masking. Let's just hop right into it. I've got a photo here. Now I've already made some adjustments. I use the light tool. I made a few adjustments there. I used Enhance AI to brighten it, and I made some color adjustments to the hue and saturation, especially around the greens. And so I took the photo from that to that. And if you just wanna look at the before and after, there we go. That just gives you an idea of what I've done already. Now, local masking is a new innovation in Luminar AI. It effectively replaces the function of layers. However, to be clear, it doesn't allow you to do every single thing that you can do with a layer. So it is different. I find it works quite well, and I've been having a lot of fun using it. But just to be clear, it doesn't do everything that a layer can do. So local masking, let's get into that. This is the tool right there. It looks like a little bit of a spray paint can, I think of that, because masking, if you're not familiar with masking, masking is basically painting. Oh, if you want to mask that in, you're painting it in. That's Those terms are kind of interchangeable. So in the local masking tool, you have two options. You just click add and you can add a basic local mask or a texture local mask. I'm gonna start with a basic. Now again, what this does, it gives you control over your image and allows you to use the tools in this basic mask and make adjustments to those sliders and then paint it in wherever you see fit in the photo. So in this case, I'm gonna bump up the shadows a little bit. Um, well, by a little bit, I mean like 50 or something but I don't really want that across the entire photo. I just really want it in the reflection and the wall. So this is where this upper section here comes into play. You have three options here, paint mask, radial mask, which allows you to make a circle or oval shape, and then a gradient mask, which is basically a straight line for an entire area. So if I wanted to cover the bottom of the photo, for example, I would use a gradient mask and you click and drag and it applies wherever it is that you drag that. So if I hit the forward slash key, that's my mask. I just painted that in. Now you can make adjustments to it, moving that up and down if you would like to. And you can also expand the zone, what I call a gradient zone. Now I'm going to do a separate video about masking in Luminar AI, and I'm going to cover in depth gradient masking, radial masking, and brush masking. So for purposes of this video, I'm mostly going to do brush masking. I just wanted to show you what a gradient can do. By the way, if I did the same thing, pulled up shadows, I could apply it with a radial mask just to show you kind of what it does. And there we go. The masked area or the painted area is that which is in red. Um, I call this the gradient zone between these two circles. You're getting none of the effect inside this inner circle. Between the inner and outer circle, you're getting a gradual increase. And then outside that outer circle, you're getting the full effect. Notice you have an option here to click and you can basically invert that radial mask so that the mask is applying only in the center. Again, I'm gonna reset. I'm gonna say shadows of about 50 or something. And I'm gonna do a paint mask because I just wanna paint it into this area here and just kind of lighten some of that shadow because I'm just gonna do several different masks here in this demo video and just give you an idea of what you can do and how it can help you be creative in your photo editing. So there's my mask. As you can see, I've painted that. I'm going to click my forward slash key and hide the mask. And you can see now that it's brighter in that area because I've masked in or painted in an increase in shadows. That was kind of in shadow. So there it is before and there it is after. Now, the nice thing about this is you can stack multiple masks. I believe the max amount is 10. So I'm going to add another basic mask. And you'll notice your first basic mask is down here. And while I would love to be able to rename them at this point, you cannot do that. So um, I've had that question a few times. So in this case, I'm gonna add some structure. I'm gonna go to like 27 or 28, crunch it up a little bit. But all I really wanna do is paint that into this wall and then into the front of the castle. So I'm just kind of painting with my brush, as you can see, and I'm adding that structure selectively into the image. So again, it's all about controlling your edits and putting them only where you want them to go. And this is not the best masking job you've ever seen, but it pretty much got the job done. So again, if I turn off this local mask, if you look at the front of the castle and that wall, there it was before, and there it is after. You can see it's a bit crunchier. So again, selectively applying these edits within the area that I've painted. Now, 
I've got that mask in place. I've added structure. I could do other things if I wanted to. If I wanted to brighten those areas a little bit, I could drag, and I'm going to exaggerate here, but I could drag the exposure slider, and you can see how that will uh, impact the photo. That's obviously way too much. My point is once the mask is in place, you can go move additional sliders here on this same instance of the basic masking tool, and it will impact that area. Okay, now I want to go add another basic mask, and I'm just kind of showing off how this works. And what I like to do here is create a cooler temperature in the water and the sky. So I'm going to take the warmth down, and I'm going to go like a negative 65 or something. Just create a little bit more of a blue look to it. And once again, I can paint it in. If I want to paint it into the sky or water at the same time, I have an eraser here. So I'm going to click Erase, and all I'm going to do is basically come in and erase that adjustment from the sky or excuse me, from the building and from the wall here. Okay, so after a tiny bit of work there, there's the mask that I've created. And now again, when you apply the tool, it applies globally, and then when you go in and mask it, you're applying it selectively. So you can either paint it in or erase it. In this case, I erased it, but basically I added blue everywhere, and then I removed it from the building and the wall because I don't want them to pick up a blue tint. I just really want that in the sky and in the water reflection. So local masking, because I can customize where things go, gives me the power to do that. Okay, so that's three different uses of the basic local mask. Now what I wanna do is add a texture local mask. So I'm gonna click on that. And if you aren't familiar with textures, they can be a photo of anything that you just stick on top of your photo, blend it together with some of the different tools here, and create something that is artistic or different or whatever. Here, I'm gonna apply a typical texture. So I'm gonna click load texture. And I've got this one here, I'm gonna say open, and it applies that texture across the photo. Now you have some controls over this, like opacity. Uh, opacity is way too high. I wanna bring that down because I just kinda of want a little bit of a canvas look in the background like you see there. And reducing the opacity is basically reducing the intensity of that. You can zoom, you can flip the texture, things like that, and you have advanced settings as well. You can come in here and play with the different blend modes and see what looks good. You can see as I hover over them that it is changing how that texture is being applied to the photo. I don't really like any of these blend modes. I'm gonna leave it at normal. You can also adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, and hue of that specific texture. Now that's not anything I'm gonna do in this photo, so I can close the advanced settings menu. And once again, just like in the basic textures that we use down below, you have the ability to paint or erase this texture. And what I wanna do is reduce the opacity of the paintbrush and I'm gonna take that down maybe to 40 or so, and I'm gonna erase, and what I wanna do is, after increasing my mouse, I wanna slightly erase that texture from some of the area of the actual castle itself and its reflection, and the reason why is because it already has a lot of kind of texture to it, whereas the rest of the image, being water and sky, is a little bit plain, and so in this case, I'm creating a textured effect that basically is a little bit like an art piece. So I've gone over that a little bit, and you can see basically what I've done is erase the texture from the building and that wall. If I hit my forward slash key, you can see where my mask is applied. And honestly, with textures, it doesn't have to be perfect. I skipped kind of the top of the, the roofs of the building, things like that. It doesn't really matter in my opinion. But if you wanna be particular about it, obviously that's your choice, and just take your time masking so that you get it looking exactly how you want it. And that's how a texture local mask works. You can turn this off to see the before photo and you can turn it back on to see how it looks when applied. I think that looks pretty cool. And now here's something else you can do. You can add additional textures if you would like to. I'm not going to here. Or you can add another basic mask to make further refinements and adjustments to the photo. And that's exactly what I wanna do. But here's the thing, you can also use this as a global tool because remember, before you paint it in, it's actually applying across the entire photo. Well, because I did some temperature adjustments and contrast and things like that up here before I started editing the, the photo with the local mask, I did that in the Essentials tab here, like on light, for example. You can see I adjusted temperature and contrast and things like that. Well, down here, I can apply these and use this as a global tool, which would be sort of like a second instance of light. It's not exactly everything that light has, but it's very similar. So I'm gonna take the warmth of the overall photo down a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna pull up the shadows just a little bit, add a little bit of AI structure just to 
pop those details a little bit. And that also, as you know, is impacting the canvas. So it's giving a little bit more crunch to that canvas sort of texture that I added. And then lastly, I'm gonna give it a little bit of vibrance just because I like my colors. And if I'm making an art piece with a texture on it, color is, is definitely gonna be a part of that anyway. So this basic mask is being applied globally. I have not masked it in anywhere. So even though it's a local mask, in this case, I'm using it globally to further refine the overall look of what I've created here. So if I turn that off, you can see there it is with the edits on the Essentials tab, plus three instances of the basic mask, plus the texture overlay. And now I came back with another basic mask. And when I turn that on, you can see that that's been applied globally. Didn't mask it in, didn't have to. But basically, local masking gives you a lot of control over where specific edits are going in your photos and allows you to stack multiple. And again, I think the number is 10 that you can go up to. I haven't tried that many. I've done like seven or eight, but I think 10 is, is the limit. Regardless, it gives you lots of flexibility and power over your photos and what you're doing to them. And frankly, it's a lot of fun. So that's really my review of how in Luminar AI, the local masking tool works. I will be back next with a video about masking in general and walk through some examples of how masking works and define it a little bit more clearly for those of you that may be new to this. But otherwise, that's how local masking works in Luminar AI. Thanks for watching, my friends. I really appreciate it. you guys. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next episode and adios.